Well, welcome to Heartbeat Christian Academy, and this is Computer Essentials Lesson 13, the revision. Before we get to the lecture, there's the banking details. If you want to support our ministry, you're most welcome to do that. And there's also the contact details. If you want to contact us, I'm giving you the cell number and the email address. So computer essentials, the previous lecture, we spoke about the performance of the computer. And I hope that you've sorted out your computer now and that the performance is excellent. But uh, just looking at the lecture that we currently at, uh, we are doing storage. And we've, we've spoken about in le lesson 12, the computer's performance. And now we're going to jump straight to revision and just see what we have in re the revision section. We have some questions that we ask and then we just ask the student to answer those questions and uh, let's start off with those questions as we get into that how is my computer's memory measured and as i'm asking the questions it's important i think that you try and answer them yourself so that you uh, can remember and, and retain the knowledge how is your computer's memory measured and the answer to that is the memory is measured in bits and bytes and gigs. So you get one gig RAM, two gig RAM, but it starts with bits, bytes, and then gig. List the main types of memory storage devices. So think about a few memory storage devices. Before I give you the answer, i like you to actually think about it. What can you think of uh, is some memory storage devices? Let me give you a second to think so your brain can work well on this one. And then I'll give you some answers that I've written out on the second slide. The main types of storage devices are hard disk drives. So you get hard disk, USB drives, USB flash drives. You know those. External hard drives that you plug in via USB. And then also CD and DVD. The disk writers that you can store on. And then NAS drives. A NAS drive is a network access storage device. So that is a device that you plug in on your local network and you can store data on that device. So I hope you got that right. In the revision, we have to talk about these things so we can prepare ourselves for the assessment. Okay, the next question. How does hard disk memory storage compare with compact disk storage in terms of cost and capacity? So how does it compare when you're writing memory or you're writing some data on a disk or you're storing it on a hard drive? And what is the answer that we that we have? A hard disk costs much more than a CD, but can store more data. So these days, I mean, as far as hard drives are concerned, uh, at the recording of this lecture, you can get USB drives. Um, I've got one in my bag that's two terabytes uh, size. So it is expensive uh, to buy those, but once you've bought it, you've got it. And uh, I've got some of my drives, my 500 gig drives, my terabyte drives that are many, many years old. So it's not necessarily that they won't last that long. With uh, disks, a lot of times you can write on a, on a normal CD 700 uh, megabytes of data. And on a DVD disk, the average standard DVD disk, you can store 4.7 gigs of data. And I still find these days that flash drives are also quite cost effective. Uh, this is, for instance, a 64 gig flash drive. Um, and you can imagine how many DVD discs or CD discs you would have to have. So I must say, as far as the new curriculum is concerned, uh, and, and what we are using these days practically, the, the DVD discs and the CDs, it's very few people that still write on that. It's only when you're sending data to somebody that doesn't have access to a USB port on a computer, they might need a specific disc. But other than that, uh, this is definitely the, the way to go, is to go for your, for your USB uh, storage devices okay so uh, we've completed that question and then describe two types of computer memory here we're talking about memory I don't know if you can remember what we spoke about but two types of memory uh, let me explain that to you we're talking about RAM which is your random access memory where, where you where your applications open and then ROM uh, which is your read-only memory. So if it says read-only, it means it can't, uh, you can't write to it uh, in a standard way. There are ways to flash ROM, but that's a different story and maybe a bit out of the scope of, of what we're learning here. But ROM is permanent storage. 
uh, that uh, obviously is on some of your on your chips uh, maybe on your CMOS chip uh, for uh, just to, to control your basic input output system then what factors can affect the computer's performance now that we spoke a lot about in the previous lecture but let's just take a look again as revision CPU speed and I said the amount of cores RAM capacity and RAM speed hard disk speed and capacity because it can run out but uh, on, on the hard drive side it used to be spin speeds that that was sort of the, the thing but now with the new SSD drives that's no longer an issue uh, now we talk about access speeds uh, uh, read and write access speeds and then what we also said here is the applications that runs on the computer and we spoke about the background applications and we also spoke about the applications that that uh, occupy the startup and then what uh, the final question is why would you need to install a graphics card so a dedicated graphics uh, card uh, that you that you would install to take the pressure off the CPU so you have a GPU a graphics processing unit why would you need to install that and I think I said that in the previous uh, lecture but we spoke about a graphics card is normally needed for playing games and the running graphics design application so anything that's really graphics intense you will need a graphics card for so I trust that covers the revision pretty well and that you are pretty comfortable with the information as we discussed it a lot of this has been reiterated and reiterated through every single lecture and lesson so I'm sure by now you know more than you knew when you started the course well I surely hope so so let's go and just also uh, while we are talking uh, in this lecture just look at the next section I just wanted to sort of tell you that now we are moving to section 4 and section 4 uh, but it says by the end of this section you should be able to understand the purpose of an operating system uh, sometimes referred to as the OS and then understand and identify software applications and understand the term uh, system development so the next section is going to be dealing with software and I'm excited to uh, share with you about the different software applications you can see there just looking at the course manual and, and the outline we're going to be talking about in, in, in lesson 14 we're going to be talking about operating systems as I said then we're going to look at application software that you might need we're going to look at, at systems development and then we're going to look at revision again we're going to do some revision so we've already covered quite a bit of ground in this course and I trust that uh, it, it remains informative and that you are learning something even if it's just something small every single session so this is just a summary of of what i've just shown you in the in the manual there section four and software uh, i will give you a bit more information than the icdl requires on the operating system but there is a specific course that uh, at the academy that deals with uh, operating systems so we won't go in, we won't have the time actually to go into great depth here but we will cover the basics so that's that's it for this lesson and i will see you in lesson 14 when we start discussing operating systems. God bless.